Well, um, hello and welcome. We are here live, um, well, quite delayed in actuality, but here live um, with a special presentation of MWO Comp Elimination Match tonight between the Black Lantern Observe Battalion and the 228 Reapers. Um, both of these teams got in kind of late in the game. Blob had to play a 12th place tie uh, match to qualify into top 12. 228 Reapers got into the three-way tie for 9th, 10th, 11th um, on the very final game of Comp Q. Both of them took care of business last week against winner's bracket teams. Blob taking care of 1st French Regiment uh, 3-0. And two two eight Reapers defeating um, the uh, KDCM. Uh, I forget what their acronym is. It's KDCM twenty eight something. It's really long. Um, but either way, it should be a really interesting match. These teams are fairly well. Uh, you know the predictions are. I believe 48% uh, in favor of Blob, 52% in favor of Reapers. Generally, these are evenly matched teams from what we've seen from them as we're getting uh, ready to uh, get this one rolling. Uh, I am sending out lobby invites now. Um, yeah, what do you expect to see tonight, Mo Mokor? Uh, well, from what we've seen on the stats website, most of these teams uh, mostly play trade, and they have the longest stats on the on the matches. with like almost eight minutes for each of their drops. So I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot of trade today. Yeah, I mean, it, I I really think that we should see a good bit of trade. Ash is um, who am I supposed to invite from two two eight R? I I'm not really sure. Um, I believe. That should be Red Baron or Jay Z. Okay, Red Baron or Jay Z. Um, <coughs> I have Red Baron. Invite to lobby, and uh, just waiting on just call me Ash to accept my friend request in order to get him into this lobby. So, um, and yeah, two to wait are. They had a really close... I mean, it was 3-1 against KDCM. It was a really close set of games. Um, you know, I had the cast for that last week, and I can say KDCM definitely had a lot of chances. Um, just call me Ash has accepted the friend request, so um, the invite is out to him. Um, we won't be playing on Forest Colony first, but we're going to have to transition to map ban here in a minute. The 228R versus the KDCM game, a lot of them came down close on caps, um, you know, close on kills, I believe uh, at least one of them was. Um, but KDCM had a cap lead on Bear Claw that they weren't able to convert um, after trying to brawl push. So 228R, I mean, battle tested, but they were able to get through those close matches and find a way to win to get here this week. Black Laner, I believe, is 5-0. and uh, The matches against First French weren't Nearly as close as some of what 228R had to do. So I, I really feel like 228R might have a little bit of advantage in terms of those close matches converting down the stretch. You know, when the pressure is kind of on, really, you know, we're able to find ways to convert some of those wins that were close. Black Lantern might have a little bit of, a, you know, a skill gap, which is crazy when you're talking about a 228 our roster that has a lot of, you know, guys like Jiffy. I mean, uh, don't see Jay-Z here tonight, um, who's a key contributor for them when he can be available. But, you know, 228Rs, they've got plenty of talent. But this Blob team is loaded with former world champions. Um, you know, I think they've got at least three guys with gold badges. Uh, you know, gold, gold champ badges. So, yeah, I mean, I really think... 228R maybe has a little bit of a practice edge. I haven't been following, you know, I haven't really heard through the grapevine whether Blob decided to start practicing once they made 228 or once they made top 12. 
Um, you know, they had said throughout the the, the comp queue uh, they had not intended to practice at all. Um, that that was sort of something that they didn't want to do, and they ended up the final weekend being able to push and get top twelve anyway, even though they were more of a casual team. Um, but yeah, they they might have a little bit of a practice edge. Two two eight R does tonight. You know, we'll see. We'll look at the strategies and see if. Maybe the strategies and builds maybe give a little bit of an edge to to two two eight R tonight, but lots of interesting dynamics going into this one. This is an elimination game, so you know both of these teams winner moves on, loser goes home, and winner moves on to face, I believe, Mantra um, out of the winners bracket who lost today um, to DSC, which is a winnable game for either of these teams. So either of these teams has a chance to find themselves inside the top four of this tournament with a win here today and obviously a win next week, which will be difficult, but you know, both of these teams could, could still go on a run here. Um, so I'm really interested to see how it plays out. Yeah, that's for sure. And at the very least, the, uh, what, whichever teams wins today is going to get a sixth or fifth place, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that's a really high stake game. We're going to see today. How it's gonna play out. So today the loser of this game um will almost assuredly uh finish eighth. Uh, I believe PCS was the eliminated team on the other side of the losers bracket, and I believe they had a higher seed than Reapers and Black Laner, and I believe that's how it's determined is highest seed going in, then you know you go by so you know which round you're eliminated in, then the highest seed going in gets the top seed in the round of elimination. So we had a Elimination earlier tonight, Potato Carry Society falls to 10th Lee Guards. Um, they'll finish 7th, and the winner, loser of this game will finish 8th. Uh, so, um, you know, chance to chance to win here and really make a statement. Neither of these teams necessarily um, were supposed to even be here. Um, you know, both of these teams were... Black Lantern certainly was not projected to be in top 12. Two Joint Reapers, people thought that they were, um, you know, going into the season. Really, you know, they had been Div A. Um, but then going into that final, not just the final night, but the final hours of the final night, they found themselves on the outside looking in um, for much of the top 12 round before finally being able to get in. Ash is alone still. Um. Uh... Yeah, I be, I believe we can start with the map bans. I'm gonna I'm gonna um yeah I'm gonna transition to map ban. Sorry, we've been talking. Um, let's just yeah let the teams know that they can start uh, the map banning, and after we determine the sites, it's gonna be easier to move everyone in. So Black Lantern is going to pick HPG to start in. So we are going to see some some map bans here. Okay. Uh, two to eight Reapers turn to choose. HPG has been Black Lantern's bread and butter to a lot of extent. Um, they usually like to pick that one first in their matches. They feel comfortable about winning. Um, there. We'll see what two to eight Reapers decides to do. Um, I think. You know, Ash had the link ready. Um, doesn't want to invite his guys to like think he determines side. Um, would be my guess. I was kind of waiting for him to get his guys on before we did the map ban, but chose not to do that. Um, Reapers. <sighs> yeah, I guess they having a hard time to choose. Which of the maps um, they want to play first? Yeah, Ash has already picked. So Reapers needs to uh, needs to pick. Red Baron said he's ready. Um, he chose Bear Claw. So um, maybe had needed a second to get the link open. Um, you know what happens, but uh, it'll be Bear Claw second. Interesting choice for Reapers. That has not been their strongest map from what I've seen. Viridian Bog, Black Lantern chooses. Mm. Um, so that's that's really interesting. Um, Terra to, for Reapers, which makes Frozen City the final map. 
I would have expected both of these teams to potentially choose Frozen City with one of their picks. So it's interesting we see that it goes to the final map. I really think that that has a lot to do with side advantage, neither team wanting to be forced to play a certain side. HPG um, Reapers will choose side two. Um, pretty standard. So we will be playing HPG first. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. And Reapers is choosing side two. So I'm going to start swapping. Yeah, and for Birklow, Reapers are choosing side one. So you had to swap once again. So we will have some side swaps. Um, then we are going to go back uh, or stay on side one for Bog as uh, Reapers chooses side one on Bog. Um, happy to see the Bog being played. Not I would many teams played. I would expect Blanner to choose side two and they do. So we will have a one map swap and then or one side swap and then three straight on the same side. Um, and then Frozen City to close it out will be another side swap. Mm -hmm. So I hope we get to see all those maps tonight. Um, we do now have the correct uh, order of the maps. HPG, Bearclaw, Viridian, Terra, and Frozen. And we are going to transition quickly back to the lobby as we await um, Team 1. Team 1, five minutes. So Ash's guys aren't here, but with the maps being banned, um, he has five minutes to, to, to get his guys on. Well. Do you want to maybe switch to the map? We're going to go to the map. Yes, let's look at the map room real quick. Um... So HPG is certainly an interesting map. Um, you know, there's a couple different angles. I expect we'll see wall trade from both teams. Um, you know, basement theta point can be pretty critical um, if you're going to do a trade strategy, but you don't want to overcommit lights into the basement or you could end up giving up a wall rush um, or end up running your guys into the teeth of potentially brawl, which you also don't want to do. Um, you know, neither of those are, are, are really good options. Um, you know, you need to have it scouted well if you're going to commit significant mechs to Theta. But it's really hard to hold once you do have it if you don't have a numbers advantage in the basement. So whichever side can get Theta could be critical. What I will say I've seen a lot of the theory seems to be this year is to try to play back caps. So um, if you can light push along the wall um, from Team 1 side and maybe get towards Kappa, um, you can hopefully back off their traders um, and potentially, you know, get uh, an opportunity to cap Kappa. Um, or, you know, from Team 2 side, you, there's similar angles to, I think, get towards Gamma. Um, yeah. You know, these aren't full brawl strategies, necessarily. You kind of push your mechs in um, in order to try to back off the opposition and, and cap a point. Um, which, you know, both of which um, hand work. Um, we'll see what the technique each side plays. Um, but yeah, as the rest of um, Team One has joined, we will await their locking. Yep. Sorry uh, for running a little bit slow tonight. Mostly, we were, uh, I. Passing. I agree with you on this uh, strats. People are usually putting some mechs into Tata in the basement, but usually just in the beginning of the game to grab it, maybe maybe even get a kill on a lone light that goes there to grab it from the enemy team. Mm -hmm. But after that, um, putting a lot of mechs on Tata really doesn't seem to benefit you as you just allow your opponent to basically seal off you from... Every every possible entrance, and just take the higher ground, or maybe even jump on, jump onto the wall and kill you, assaults or trade mechs that are standing there. So yeah, considering these teams usually play trade, I believe we're gonna see at least three, maybe four mechs on the walls and a couple of. Lights, a whole wolf pack just going around 
on the bottom part of the map trying to maybe grab data here and there or just try to prevent a push on the wall if it's ever gonna happen mm. I believe it's about two minutes left for team one I could be wrong on that um let me check Yeah, I can't type. I'm trying to type two minute warning, but I, it's not working. Okay, uh, for the mechs, the most used mech for um, Blob team was the XZM and Vulcan, while the most used chassis were XZ, Vulcan, Flea and Shadowcat. And for the Reapers team, let's see, we have Shadowcat as well as the most used mech. Alright, and... team 1 is locked. So team one is locked. Nice. Team two will have five minutes. Yep. And for the Reapers, the most used chassis was uh, Stone Rhino. So I believe we're going to see some Stone Rhinos on the walls. Some Executioners mm -hmm. as well. And probably some Stalkers. At least from the Reapers team as they were bringing them a couple of times. Yeah. Um, I believe Blob has brought um, Stalker as well. Like, I could be wrong on that, but I believe they brought a mid-range Stalker potentially mm. um, on this map before. I could be misremembering, um, but I had their game against um, Op 4, uh, and I believe that they had a, a mid-range Stalker in that. Although it could have been Op 4 that had that, or I'm just completely off. Well, from the stats I see, they did bring a Stalker one time, though I'm mm -hmm. not sure what it was running. But they also brought uh, Stone Rhinos and Madcat 2. Yeah. The Stone Rhino, they really, I mean, they really like the Stone Rhino, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Stone Rhino is one of the best, if not the best, Assault mech right now. It's fast, it's bulky, it can take a hit and do a lot of damage. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Well, team two is locked as well. We are locked, so we are going to transition back to the lobby and launch here. And actually, I'm going to transition back to the match view to get this proper so blob versus a 228 reapers let's start now so wh wh who would you like would you like blob or the uh the reapers uh, I would need a sec as I'm still loading in. Uh, okay, I um, can stay with Sigma side here and uh, tell you what mechs they are bringing. Okay. Well, I'm gonna... I have a second to admire the beautiful view of this map while everyone is still loading in. Yeah, um, you know, we're taking a second to load in here. Um, I think this is pretty regular for, I believe it's a blob who, um, the potential to do a reaper as well might have a couple guys that take a second to load in. Um, I don't know why. Oh, there's the game sound. So, Stalker 5S for Blob, uh, Flea 17, 
Um, 5S is ER large. Stone Rhino 6, uh, you know, that ER large. Slip and Grip is bringing the Crusader uh, mid, mid, mid range. <coughs> Shadowcat MI, Vulcan, Osiris, and XCM. Okay, so for Reapers, we have a uh, Stalker with 6 ER larges, Stone Rhino, Annihilator, Janier 2C, uh, Shadowcat Mishu Pershu, Phoenix 7S, and Spider and Wiper. Grabbing Kappa right now. So, uh, it doesn't look like Epsilon is a priority for Blob at all. Um, you know, they have nobody going near there, really stacking their lights towards Theta. Yeah, and they already grabbed it. Yeah, they do have it. They are putting some ticks on it. You know, 228 are not really contesting it. Nothing. The problem is that's just still a two cap. You know, it's two to two, even with Theta, as the trades start to come in. Yeah, but they can always grab Epsil later. And the rest of the, the Reapers are coming in closer to basement. Probably there's going to be a push in a second. Although none of the Blob team is there anymore. Yeah. Okay, so we have a Stone Rhino trading here from one of the ramps. Annihilator just got to his position on the wall. And. Ash is really taking some damage here in the Stone Rhino 6. Um, you know, Red Baron's getting it in the Stalker 2. Um, it's close to even trades, both teams. Yeah, and Reapers are starting their push into the basement. He yeah, and Reapers. One is uncontested here in their basement push. They'll be able to flip Theta and get a 3-cap here, and not much that uh, Blob is going to be able to do about that. Really. There's an opportunity maybe to get on the traders with all of this weight just committed into the basement, but um, Red Baron still taking a lot of damage. Um, is Yorshka and Red Baron the only traders here? Mm. Where's the Stone Rhino Coloss? Is the Coloss in the basement? Uh, he is. Yeah. He went Jiffy to the basement. in the Coloss. So that's not ideal. Two against three. Now, Red Baron's taking it on the chin, but Ashes as well. So, you know, slight trade advantage, um, maybe towards uh, Blob. Um, but even you know you when you have three against two you should be doing a little bit better than slight you would think i haven't seen the red baron's components um you know just looking at percentage yeah so far blob is just kind of sitting back nothing is open on the red baron just damage all around mm -hmm. uh stone rhino wanted to move out of the basement but decided to stay in the basement for a bit longer I guess they just trying to bait blob into going into basement Maybe grab well, Jiram in the XC has jumped off the wall. Ooh, um, same for Yondu. He jumped off the wall in his stalker. Uh, uh, that's interesting, because that leaves Ash as the lone trader um, up on the wall. Still now a two-on-one for Ash, although I'm not sure the Annihilator has angles. And Blob is preparing for the push on the left side of the map here. Wolfpack is already yeah, here. Yeah, Blob's Blob's coming in hard on the on this right side, um, left or left side, sorry. Um, really trying to get towards Red Baron, um, and then maybe swing Kappa. So we talked about this earlier. Um, this is a strong push angle. Um, you know, this is one of the real theory in Team One side. But G Ram back up on the wall, starting to get some trades from the Annihilator. Um. And these basement fighters are, are, are swarming up to try to stop this push. Red Baron jumps from the wall, so they won't have his support here. And No, and he, and he can't deny the point. He can't deny the point. He's going to get run down by the flea, probably, too. Close fighting. Close fighting. I don't know why my game audio is not working, but... Um, Really close. Hard to really tell. I think Blob's got a slight advantage here, but that XC's taking a beating on the wall. Um, 
Nothing's died. The flea now, though, the flea's trying to make a run at the Annihilator and has taken a lot of leg damage. So that's not good for Blob. Still haven't flipped the point back either, and Caps are getting a little bit out of control. Um, finally making a play for the Cap. But they've completely left Gamma um, completely isolated. I'm not sure if Reaper's noticed, though. GRAM almost cored. Um, hard to follow. Yeah, one of the lights is going for Epsi, and mm -hmm. Call Me Ash is going to protect it from the wall. Zelk is getting some back hits Epsi, in here. Epsi is not the Epsi's not the play. Ash is able to deny, and temporary access is able to come in for the finish. Zelk's overextended here. Um. Yeah, and Ash got his back torso with uh, his alpha strike, so Zelk is gonna go yeah. down here in so a second. So Zelk's gonna go down, but will temporary access be able to range over to Gamma in time? Um, the first kill of the match, but lots of percentage coming off of pretty much anybody. I'd give Blob. I think Blob's got a good, fairly decent percentage advantage here. Um, hard to, you know, really tell. I'm just a cursory look. What Blob doesn't have is caps. And Gamma is going to fall and probably going to be full capped. Yep. Theta, though. Theta. Uh, Blob is able to play for Theta. Um, and I don't think... 228 has a lot of angles for... Oh, they, Theta fight, Theta fight. Yeah, they're coming into the basement. Jiffy is here but in his stone right now. not denying it. Royal Star's legged. Jiffy is trying to fight this, but I think the numbers are pretty clearly in favor of Blob down here. Yeah, they just... Temporary X down. is still... Good. DRAM and the XE goes down, though. Huge Ooh, kill. Leg lost on Noble Red and his <clears> Vulcan. <throat> Royal Star may go down here. Loses a Royal well. Star's going down in a hurry. Still staying alive. But Gladysaur has ranged over. I'm stuck in the wall here. Gladysaur and Red Baron have been able to get into this basement fight. Uh, I don't believe they were here a second ago. Temporary Axis goes down. Um, so that's a huge kill. The Crusader's going down too. Slip and Griff goes down. So that's pretty much going to swing this basement fight uh, back into 228's favor pretty handily. As Noble Rat goes down, Data's going to get ticked. Epsilon's getting ticked. Um, and this is going to be a 2 2 win on Caps. Almost wow. assuredly. Yeah. I thought, the, I thought. oh no, why, do, why aren't they capping? Uh, there it is. Okay. Yondu and the Stalker are trying to get in on this fight, but just going to get ripped apart. I thought Blob had that. They but unable deep. to... <laughs> unable to finish it. Um, the numbers just swung at the last set. You know, I, I thought they had initially, they had numbers in the basement. Um, but then that just didn't materialize. If Ash can get a kill on Epsilon, though, uh -huh. um, I don't think the numbers work. Um, it unless it's a forecap. No, it, he, he, they can forecap here on Epsilon. Fire Ant just needs to, to live. And he does a pretty good and job I, on it, yeah. One of the lights is going for Kappa already, so but it Kappa, should be... And Kappa's gonna flip back. Yeah, Kappa's yeah. gonna flip back. Okay, so... um, And he can just outrun Ash here. So it will be a 2-2-8-R victory. Really tight fight in the basement. I'm not sure what is up with my game audio. I can only hear... um, The, like, announcer. I can't hear Pro any of the effects. Probably because we are uh, in vacuum. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just with HPG. Yeah. But Fire Ant and Zelk, neither of which <clears throat> had a lot of damage, but Fire Ant with a minute and 50 seconds of cap time, um, you know, critical for, for that 2 to 8 art. I mean, they, they won on kills, ultimately, uh, through that be, being able to force that basement fight, um, but critical amounts of cap time. Yondu really put out a lot in the Stalker, Jeffy L628. And the Coloss and Critical in that basement fight really put it in work in that basement fight. So really, really solid win from 228R. Um, so they're going to get out to the 1-0 lead, and those 1-0 leads are tough. It doesn't sound like a lot. Um, but, you know, you lose one, 
particularly if you chose the map first, which Blob did. Blob chose HPG, and then they lose. And you think the map, if you're choosing first, that's your best map, right? So if you go down 0-1 on what is you think is your best map or the map that you're most comfortable in, that doesn't always bode well um, going forward. We'll see if uh, Blob can rally, but we're going to go ahead, and I believe there's a side swap here. Uh, yep, I think so. So we're going to go ahead and swap sides and uh, go in and talk about that one a little bit. Um, this is wrong. I've already I've already messed this up. Yondu is uh this is correct, right? Royal Temporary, Red Baron, Jiffy, Fire Ant, Zelt, Gladistor, and Andulard. That's two to eight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Although uh, um temporary access should be on blob team. Uh Temporary access on Blob Team, and who is not? Yorshka. Yeah. I thought it was the 2 to 8 plus the JGX guys, and so I kind of yeah. screwed that up. Um, but either way, let's go. We're going to go back to the map room. Um, we saw a couple things on that last one that I think were interesting. We saw. Um, Blob play, uh, you know, the angle that we talked about, um, uh, trying to push towards Kappa from team one side. I really do think that that's strong technique. Um, uh, it worked for them. They got Kappa. Um, the really thing, the things that I really noticed, they didn't cap Epsilon at the beginning of the game. Um, they capped Theta, but they didn't hold it. And they were able to make that, they had to make that basement push late because, you know, they, they, during the Kappa push, they gave up their back cap. They gave up Gamma. Um, and during the Theta push, they ended up giving up Epsilon too. So they, they weren't able to, you know, manage the back caps. They ended up having to get this fight on Theta, which, um, you know, ended up not going their way. They had numbers initially, but they weren't able to force project the same way that 228R ended up being able to. Um, with some of the way that their assaults were positioned. Um, and obviously, once their executional went down, I don't think they had any assault, assaults in the basement. So, <clears throat> versus two from uh, 228R. Um, Sorry, I... But yeah, data critical, in... Kappa push critical, back cap on Gamma. I'll interrupt you for a sec. We need to change them up to Bear Claw. So, guys, can uh, we... yes, yes, yes. Prepare. Yeah, I believe um, the main thing here was this data push. Originally, Blob had an upper hand in it, but they decided to put all the baskets into grabbing data instead of just pushing into the Reapers and killing them while they were trying to go one by one into the basement. Yeah, I mean, the Reapers having the... Res uh, you never want to be responding... Um, necessarily to a theta push. Um, Reapers did a great job though. Um, being able to not get aggressive when they that kappa push came, they really tried to keep their guys in the basement. They fought a little bit, skirmished a little bit. Um, yeah. sorry. The main thing for Reapers was here is that they bought a lot of time for their lights to get to Gamma and Epsi. Even if they lost this fight, even if they would have lost this fight on Theta, they would still have won by just grabbing Gamma and Nepsi at some point. Alright, well, let's talk briefly, ever so briefly, about Bearclaw. Um, so I believe Reapers is now Team 1. Mm -hmm. Reapers chose Bearclaw and, um, you know... Uh, Blob chose uh, Team 2. Uh, I believe Team 2 is generally considered to be a much stronger side. Um, you know, you can get the Theta faster from Team 2. Um, there's a Rock, I believe, in G5 that's quite advantageous for the trade setups from Team 2. Um, I mean, there's a few angles here. The Epsilon, you know, 7-line swing. Um, you see a lot of teams do try to push their assaults down 7-line. Um, trade along those, you know, the 
I forget what they're called, airstrips, mm-hmm. um, tarmacs, um, you know, those wide, long angles, firing lines that you have. Um, and then, you know, you have try to set up like an Epsilon, Sigma, Gamma, Epsilon, Beta, Sigma. Um, you know, you have some some lines there. Um, the other one is, you know, you play North, South, and, and you set up on the rocks in G5, G7. So, you know, you can go with the mobile the mobile push you can go with the you know stagnant trade um i mean you can go with brawl you can you can definitely brawl into this i don't think that's really in the dna of either of these teams uh, um so don't expect that um but you can you can brawl into this look so um i wouldn't Always say brawl's really ideal for bear claw um a lot of teams had a lot of success brawling Bear Claw and Comp Q, but here in the top eight, where you have teams able to execute some of these high level trade looks and a- execute them well, um, I-, I really do give trade an advantage on Bear Claw, um, or at least cap game. So, as team two locks, we are going to uh, go ahead and launch here um, as we will transition to. Other scene. Yeah, another good thing for Team 2 here is that they get to cap a bit faster, will if it's like 10 uh, seconds difference. I'm um, so, having a, some technical issue. So yeah, they they have a, a bit of advantage on starting the cap game here, because they can get to Tata and Kappa much faster. But yeah, I believe trade is the main focus of this map, because the center is pretty open. And sites are open as well, so you, if you want to brawl, it's mostly a cheese strategy with uh, you going on one of the sites, either Kappa or Epsi, and uh. trying to kill some lights or swing from the side. I've got Sigma side. Okay. I've got Sigma side. I'm on Gamma. Let's see. Team 2 is Gamma side, I believe. And we have a. Uh... Yes. We have Blob here with me. Okay, okay. so it looks like we've hold. got a hold called. Um, so Shy or so Zelk says two two eight R has a crash. Um. So I'm not sure who that is, um, but we can look at the mechs for a second. Mm-hmm. Um. 228R is bringing their Stalker uh, mid-range. Jiffy in that. Coloss, he loves that. Sturm 6 is 2R large, 2 Hag 30s. Uh, XEM, you know, this is mid-range. The Shadowcat Mishapishu, uh, this is Beams, actually. Mm. Very strong. Um, you know, one of the three different Shadowcat builds you'll see. Part of the reason why the Shadowcat's the most played mech is just because there's like three different builds for it that are really good. Um, Ice Ferret, Osiris, Urban Mech. Um, see that on Bear Claw sometimes, light PPC mag shots. I believe they ran this last week. Alright, well, they are back. Um, so, 13.45 or 13.45 Mm-hmm. We're going to go at 1345, so um, you can go ahead and Okay, we have a uh, uh... Shadow Cat from Blob Team here as well, but with Zeppy Gauss and Plasma Cannons. Executioner M uh, for Shine Plasma. Crusader Vulcan with Snub Nose PPCs. Uh, Flea with Mag Shots. Stone Rhino with Year Larges and Year Mets. Uh, Black Widow Warhammer with ballistic build and Ice Ferret with small pulse lasers and uh, year micro lasers. Already going to Epsi. Well, the Shadow Cat is going to come to die Epsi with or Epsi with the beams. Um, as two two eight R makes a play for Kappa. Um, gonna try to keep this two two on caps here. Uh, unable to get Theta is. 2 to 8, although Royal Star takes some damage, but just a little bit. Um, but Gladysaur can just beam this Ice Ferret. Um, this Ice Ferret needs to get out of here without taking too much damage. He's not going to be able to cap this point. 
and he's in trouble here. Yeah, I already got a yeah. red armor on the leg, so... I'm trying to click on him, but I can't. I'm not sure why. Yeah, already red armor on one of the legs. Um, definitely not ideal. I don't think the Shadow Cat really can make a play for Epsilon. Blob is really stacked up, and their Flea's also taking some damage. Um, but Blob's basically, all their mechs are within a grid square or two. Um, that's not necessarily ideal. They're trying to trap the Shadow Cat, though. They know the Shadow Cat's maybe going to make a play for Epsilon. Um, all of the Blob mechs going towards Epsilon. Stalker Red Baron, um, kind of out there. Uh, Blobs might push this, this yeah. Epsilon line. Seems they. So this is the line. This is the line I kind of talked about. Where you you push your assaults down this right side. Um, Blob not electing to use some of the rock high ground, uh, but they Ash will hang in to trade. Um, here, I'm not sure what's the grid square. Gets punished for it. FC flips to to a uh, blob, but Theta flips to two two eight R. And pretty good map control, I would say here from Blob. Kappa's looking isolated, but that entire half of the map is completely empty from uh, Blob. Two two eight R really has what they want. They have the three caps. They're trading and. It seems like doing pretty well on their trades, although Yorshka is taking some damage. Yondu, ooh, getting burned in the Warhammer Black Widow. Don't love the Warhammer pick. Um, that's a squishy mech. Yeah, and the rest of the Blob team are pushing up to Tata. Probably gonna be well, some yeah. play to grab it. I don't, I don't see how they can grab it. Um... They're gonna have without winning a fight here, so unless they brawl, mm. unless they're ready and willing to brawl push, um, mm? almost, but now it's getting denied. They almost got it there, but the XC is getting crushed for it, and Epsi's about to flip to 228. Um, so caps really 228 really managed to get the caps well these first two games, yeah, and Blob is beat up. Red Baron, though, and the Stalker is about to go down. Uh, um, but a lot of hurt mechs for Blob, including Shine Plasma. And it's a 4 cap for 2 to And here comes the push. Um, kind of, almost. Jiffy is close. Yeah, they need But some not help fully here. committing. Jiffy's going to get. Jiffy's gonna get got, but there goes Shine Plasma's torso, and he's mm, down. Nice back shot from. That's Rose, a nice right? kill. Oh yeah. And his goes down as well. I believe Jiffy's lost a torso. The flea goes down. No, Jiffy only down an arm, so he's still fighting. Full push, and it's just getting eaten up on the backside. Warhammer Yandu's getting eaten up. Ash seems to be the focus target here in the middle. Um. The, there goes Yandu, finally goes down to the uh, Mishapeshu. Fire Ant dies, but Ash is about to go down. Angel Art is staying alive. Mm, Self destruction from Slippengriff and Ash. Cronite gets Andy Lard, but um, temporary Axis, he's losing his leg. Six uh, Noble Rat, already. he's lost a leg. And what's left? On the... Cronite here Cronite, in the Mishapeshu. Yeah. Without a leg already, so he's not going anywhere. That's already legged, and 2 to 8 are going to jump out to a commanding 2 0 lead. Wow. So, this is, I mean, great for 2 to 8. Obviously, chances for um, Blob on both maps, um, more so on um, HPG, but, you know, that's as I talked about, that's the danger of going down 0 1, particularly as the team that picks map first. Is you you get your best map, and if you lose, then you get their best map. And if you lose that, you go down 0 2. Not quite midnight yet for Blob. We've seen reverse sweeps this tournament. Um, Mantra versus PCS comes to mind. Jiffy with 840 in the Stone Rhino Coloss, and he was frontlining and did not die. Um, you know, that push never really fully reached him, was able to just kind of hang in. 
get his pokes in um, and really just deal at that short range. That Kolos build absolutely mauls. Um, Yorshka also 500 damage. Royal Star gets almost 500 in the Phoenix Hawk. Gladysaur 400 in the Mishapeshu. Really key play from Gladysaur in the Mishapeshu to begin the match with really, you know, denying that cap and taking a lot of percentage off the Ice Ferret. So, really nice plays from 228 there. Yeah. And from what I see in both of these matches, 228 really make sure to not die even if they beaten up they just try to win as much time as possible and they do it pretty well also another thing to mention fire and did a beautiful flank on the whole basically blob team going from the air strip on uh elliot 4 and just killing uh firstly moving shine plasma showing his back to his teammates so he died very fast, and then just basically being a thorn in the in the side of the blob team. I believe it's Viridian Bog now. Uh, yep. Um, do we side swap again? I don't think so. No, we stay the same sides. So we will be the same sides. I'm gonna call Team One five minutes. Um, as we're gonna go to the map room. So I mean, we saw their blob. Attempted, it seemed like, especially once they saw that Misha Peshu denying them on Epsilon, they attempted this swing um, out. And and usually it gets pretty strung out. I mean, I think part, I mean, you're not really looking to murder ball this. You know, you can have your Stone Rhino in the back still trading and your, you know, your XC up here or whatever. But they never really fully committed to that idea. They end up cutting back once they lose Theta, cutting back in like, into this cover um, to try to trade. Um, you know, they, they lose Theta, they don't have Epsilon, you know, they're down 3-1 to one on caps, and rather than really committing to this long push angle, where you kind of snake in here, you deny Epsilon here, you know, you can prevent the Shadow Cat from suppressing Epsilon, you can cap that, you can get towards Sigma, it's hard um, if your assaults are snaking in on this back line, it's hard for Team one to protect Sigma. Um, I mean, you kind of give up Gamma, but then maybe there's Theta that you can play for. Um, you, they end up kind of cutting back towards their lone bat cap um, and really ceding a lot of the map control to to two two eight, where you know you have this three cap and you have this cap that's denied, and and three to one is you know really effective. Yeah, I believe the main point for Blob here. They hope they will get Epsilon in the beginning, but uh, Reapers basically countered it with a Shadow Cat Beam Laser build who just didn't allow them to get it. So they had to put more mechs into here to try to retake Epsilon. They bled some armor, they lost some time, and all of the assaults and heavy mechs that were here were just trading in, in disadvantage because there were less of them. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, the trades didn't really go um, Blob's way. Um, I, I didn't really like the Warhammer pick. Um, I think the Crusader can be good, but it's kind of not what you necessarily would be my first choice in, in today's meta, quote-unquote. Um, but, you know, we'll... We'll see if they can rally on Viridian. Um, Viridian... Uh, um, Blob gets team 2 on Viridian. They chose Viridian, I believe. And um, we didn't talk about it in the map bands, but 228 made the very interesting decision to choose team 1. Um, I, I wouldn't say... Well, very interesting is maybe the wrong term. There is some debate as to whether or not Team 1 is better. I, it probably is, now that I think about it. Um, I kind of swapped the sides of my mind accidentally. Team 2, you have the big, you have the Kappa Rock, which people like. Um, but I, I believe Epsilon's pretty much just easier to hold than Theta. Um, 
from team like team one side can hold theta and epsilon team two has to get theta um in order to really get a three cap um and it's it's easily suppressed from team one side so um 228r gets to choose team one now we'll see where which rock high grounds they end up setting their traders up 228 will or blob will either have to make a play for theta early which they could um or make a play for um make a play for uh epsilon later once theta once you don't have theta it's really hard to get it back um so usually you kind of have to play for epsilon the d5 rock um transitioning to the d5 rock is really t t2's best move it allows you to cover epsi kappa and hopefully nothing gets to your back cap sigma um and just kind of fight around d5 so uh, we'll see what blob elects to do here um if they can get theta early i like team two side actually very i, I think it's very good at receiving pushes mm -hmm. um team two side is and you kind of have to push if you don't get theta from team one side so um you're better off probably just pushing theta but if you have mechs um, up in, the, I believe it's uh, D8, um, high ground, F7 high ground, that can suppress, it, it becomes quite tricky. So we're going to um, go ahead and launch here um, as Team 2 locks. Yeah, I believe if you can grab data, Team 2 is preferential here because kappa point is really open there's no big rocks covering it and there's a good place in d5 where most of the assaults from team 2 are going to be standing so they can cover it and yeah kappa is most likely going to be yours from the beginning and if you manage to grab data you can just sit on your three cap and just wait for enemies to push but if you don't manage to grab data then it's the same story but from the team one side they can just sit until the very end uh, and just control epsi theta and uh, gamma i believe and just wait for enemies to yeah. push into them well i'm gonna go to the sigma side here i'm gonna take gamma side so Reaper's looking to close it out here. This is do or die time for Blob. And, you know, you don't necessarily have the ideal side. Um, but this is elimination. Blob, very talented team. Very talented team. Um, and if 228R is able to finish this, very impressive win. This 228R team has a lot of talent, too. I don't want to discount how talented this 228R team is. And they really, even though it took them till the probably the final mid, you know, final ten minutes to qualify for top twelve, they were always a bit of a sleeping giant, and they really have been playing well the last two weeks. So they could really make a run if they can finish this out. It seems like two two eight R is really going to make a play for Theta. They're moving their Xe, a Crusader, a Mistlinks, and a Jenner over to Theta. Four mechs to Theta. Same as Bob other mechs include Viper, Direwolf, and Stone Rhino. Blob, it can Arth can Arnetheus get it? He does. So now we'll have this data fight. Not a lot of ticks, so easily ticked back from Team One side, and I think Team One side has a little bit better angles to to slip in and take that back. What I will say, um, not a lot of caps on Sigma either. So if this comes to a late game cap game. Uh, two Twitter can flip that back pretty fast if they need to. Yeah. Epsi looks like not what Blob wants. Blob setting their Mad Cat up on the high ground above Kappa. Um, where are their other assaults, though? Uh, really favoring Theta. Another Warhammer Black Widow. <laughs> yeah, and we have a. Uh... 5 to 5 max here on Tate right now. Yorshka taking damage. And Yorshka's Overwatch on Theta. 
So if if Blob can take out Yorshka, even if they were to lose Theta, they could potentially get it back. But Fire Ant's sneaking Theta and is able to uncap it almost surely. No, no, he's not. He's not unable to uncap it. And now, now Blob's wise to it. He was close. You know, that's like a hairline of a tick. Like, so close. But 2 2 8 is really taking a beating on percentage. They're traders. This does not look great for 228. Um, down on caps, certainly down on percentage. Fire it in the Jenner and Yorshka in the XCM. Really getting beat up. Yorshka needs to not trade because he is alone against multiple traders from Blob. And his Dire Wolf and his Stone Rhino, not giving him any help. But Jiffy is transitioning over. Um, to potentially get into this fight, Jiffy very isolated. If 228R is able to notice this, I mean, Zelk maybe can range over, but they could potentially jump him. I don't think they have the mechs in the area to do it, um, but very isolated on the, out on the wing. Yorshka, he's still trading, trying to. Yeah, we have a dire wolf from Reaper's team here, being away from the fight, and I guess he's waiting for some kind of push or something. Oh, what happened to Jiffy? He took a ton of damage, and he's cored. Yeah. Now Shine Plasma, Shine Plasma took it on the chin, pro I think, from Jiffy there, but Ash and the Mad Cat too starting to show some damage, but definitely still favor um, percentage to Blob. And only really the Jenner is threatening Theta. I wonder if 228's looking to push here. They've kind of stacked up their Mist Links, their Crusader, um, the Vipers in the area. Flea coming. Flea now transitioning over to Theta. And Andy Lord going to make a play for it? Maybe. Maybe not. Both teams are watching Theta, so it's... Really hard to move into it. Two two eight are really not doing much. Um, you know, running back and forth a bit. They've left Epsilon completely isolated. Uh, Blob doesn't seem to notice that, but if they snuck a light over to Epsilon, they could get a four cap here. Not sure you want to risk it though. And there goes Theta. No, no. Uh, yes, yes. Unable to get, unable to get the uh, suppress. Denies it, and that's a lot of damage going out on those mites as they push around. A lot of damage on the 228 light pack, and Blob's content to run away. I mean, they've got a hundred cap lead as long as they don't give up data. Um, you know, they can pretty securely take you know take this cap lead and 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 milk it. Unfortunately, though, I'm not sure they're going to be able to suppress as Theta flips to. 228R. So that's huge. Um, percentage, I'd say, has evened out a little bit, but um, definitely still advantage blob. Uh, you look at that Incubus at 99%, the Stalker at 93, Flea 91. Um, but Jiffy has got a flea on him now. The Lavadashi finally in the fight, but the Wolf Pack, the Blob Wolf Pack are going to push these assaults, it looks like. Um, and I'm not sure that they're going to be able to respond. Did Yandu just lose an arm? Uh, okay, so I thought it was a torso, maybe, but it was just an arm. But luckily, Blob's Wolf Pack able to fall back in line and protect their assaults. As this is definitely a close game still. Vulcan, Noble Rat, and Shine Plasma both could go down very quickly. Um, maybe potentially the first two to die, despite all the early damage that 228R suffered. Shine Plasma really looking low. Um, and 228R was able to get significant ticks on Theta. It's not... It is... I mean, it, it, 228R will be able to win if they can hold three caps. Um, Blob has to think of something here as this game is starting to kind of slip away. Jiffy's been halved though, but he's actually got a lot of armor. The percentage might not, the percentage might look bad, but he's got a lot of armor. But only two um, left on his left. remaining. 
Not yeah. much of a fight. True. True. Not a lot of firepower, but he's still kicking. Yorshka in the XC took all that early damage. Still red armor, but not quite cord. Blob's got to pick an angle and push. Um, there goes Fire Ant, so Fire Ant dies in the Jenner. Yondu may die so. soon as well. Is CT open and get some hits from one of the assaults from... Uh, Ash the and Yondu and Shine Plasma all beat up. Um, Cronite Temporary <laughs> and Arthmetheus all pretty healthy. Yondu goes down to Lavadashi. And here comes the push. Life's pushing up to Theta. Gonna try to get these kills. Temporary Axe is going around the back way. I don't like that. Cronite gets lagged. Zelk and the Viper loses most of his weapons. But the Axe is able to just rain death here as mm. Arnetheus and Cronite are gonna lose legs in this fight. Um, we'll see if Gladysaur is able to just continue to hang in. But no, no he goes down. Unless they can get to Yorshka, it's going to be hard to cap this point. Um, as 228R loses a lot of their mechs. Temporary Axis, is he lagged? No, but he's close to it. Really close to it. Theta is uncapped, though, and ticking back to a blob. So they're able to get the kills and get the cap point. Um, Yorshka unable to deny. As they're able to tick significantly on this cap point. Ash needs to hold Kappa. Royal Star and Andy Lard transitioning to Kappa. Um, and it's just a really wounded Ash. So I will say I'm not sure if Ash just needs to get one or two shots. Just one or two shots. Yorka gets a kill on I don't... Shine Plasma. <sighs> but it's probably gonna end in uh, Blob's favor. I believe Blob has this here, even with a two cap, um, even with a, basically a one cap at this point. Yep. Um, it is going to be able to go their way on kills. So that really is huge for Blob, able to get a win on Viridian and get to the next map. Um, that critical cap on Theta early, where they just slivered it and were able to just hang on for dear life, just white knuckle that thing up until about 450 ticks. Yeah, I mean, 228R was able to flip it back. But by that point, they never were able to catch up. You know, the, the uh, cap lead was just too great. That a 3-2 to two cap lead wasn't enough for them to catch up until, you know, to, until Blob was able to come up with their response and get that Light Wolf Pack push, um, you know, to and through Theta uh, and prevent the deny. So really, really good stuff from Blob answering the bell they're facing elimination and we will see a game four yep that is true and really good stuff from ash almost 700 uh yorshka in the xc almost a thousand damage from yorshka in the xc um shine plasma had a good deal flipping griff um you know 450 um yandu and the warhammer had 300 you know i i, I didn't love the pick while Adashi was able to finally get in that fight and do about 500, but um, more of a trade battle. More of a trade battle. Um, uh, do we swap sides here? Uh, I believe no. We only swap for the last game. Okay, we're only swapping for the last game. So we're going to Terra. Um, we'll see a game four. I think this is the first game four of the day. I... Yeah, um, yeah you're correct. Which, love to see it. Uh, oh yeah, that's a uh, wrong term. Oh, this is Crucible. Yep. My bad. <laughs> why? Why are they not in alphabetical order? Yeah, I just that's how it is. <laughs> stupid. Um, so we're gonna go to the map room here. Um, you know, Meridian, as we talked about. Theta really was the critical point. We did not see Team 2 have to lever Epsilon because they were able to get Theta early. Um, you know, they by the time that the fight really happened, they end up choosing to, to lever Theta again instead of Epsilon um, with their assaults that 
beat up, you can't really do the D5 push. Um, but they're healthy-ish, healthy enough wolf pack. I would say he healthy enough. I mean, they, they most of them lost their legs in that fight, but were able to get the kill on the Crusader that they needed, were able to chase off um, or kill the Viper and uh, chase off the other lights and, and able to flip Theta. So, yeah. You know, a lot of these trade strats really hinge on a single cap point. Um, Terra? Really, really interesting map. Really, really interesting. Um, we do have Blob getting the Team 2 side. Um, so Blob gets to choose their map. And and we talked about, hey, you know, can you, is there a way to see a reverse sweep here? Um, you know, after 228R goes up 2-0 and Blob gets to go back to Viridian, go back to a map they pick, they feel comfortable on. And then they get to go to a map like Terra where... There is kind of a side advantage, in my opinion. They get to pick their favorite side, um, which would be Team 2. I, I'm curious to see what exactly Blob chooses to do. Um, these positions, in my opinion, um, are very strong. The positions I'm about to throw up there. Um, but these positions are very strong for Assault Max to get around Kappa. You can deny towards Sigma, you can deny towards Gamma, and you can keep Kappa, and you can even get like maybe a light medium, um, you know, beam laser Mishu Peshu or something out towards Gamma too, like towards the edge of the map to help deny this Gamma, which is kind of difficult, more difficult to deny from up here. Um, but, you know, you can really lever a cap strategy from Team 2's side that doesn't hinge on Theta. And it's very hard for Team 1 um, in order to, um, I didn't even call time yet. Um, it, it's very hard for team one to really get three caps. Um, usually I believe gamma, um, you give up Sigma bad cap and play for gamma, I think is generally what you want to do. Cause gamma is a little bit harder to deny from that, that sky ring. Um, if you can suppress Sigma, then that's also good. But it's hard. It's hard to do. Um, so, you know, we'll see what the these teams elect to come up with. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited. Yeah, that's for sure. And from Team One side, you really need these three cap points. And yeah, I believe most of the teams play for Gamma, which maybe they play. But if you still have these assaults here maybe troublesome they're gonna lose some armor on the walk there or you can just stay in the Elliot 7 area and just try to hold on to sigma for as long as possible or this also this vulcan that you uh, like well, volcano you can jump into and i believe some of the medium mechs can jump on this side where you can kind of see sigma and try to deny it so we'll see if our teams will bring something like that today. And if they will make a push for Sigma or Gamma to win. Yeah. Definitely an opportunity for Blob to equalize here and get us to Frozen. And Frozen's a... I mean, Blob's been good on Frozen. Um, so I, I really think, you know... 228R, they gotta they gotta really buckle down and put this one away. They had great chances there on Viridian. They just weren't able to close it out. Um went down early, battled back, just weren't able to um Yeah. Yeah. Viridian was very similar to HPG we saw today. It just Swung in the last moment towards uh, Blob team instead of how much Reapers. time left? Three minutes. So uh, it seems like they want to take their time to to really talk about this one. Um, even asking, inquiring about how much time's left. Um, you know when you maybe not practicing as much. I mean, I'm not saying Blob isn't practicing at all, although they say they don't practice at all. 
you know, you might not know the exact technique until you get their match day. I've never, I, I mean, I would know what that team dynamic is if they're not practicing. Um, but it's it's very possible. I mean, that they're not, um, not learning these strategies until uh, right now in the lobby. What I see here and. What I believe they may be talking about is that uh, Team 1, for the Reapers, they have most of their mechs in Alpha and Brava, and only one in Charlie, so... Usually people yeah, put well, more mechs in Charlie, just to go to Tata and Epsi, so maybe we can expect some uh -huh. push towards Kappa. They also only have seven guys in Lobby. So, um... You know, that that's also a factor. Um. Yeah. Only seven true. guys in lobby, so they're waiting on somebody to get back. Presumably, I certainly hope they didn't have someone who had to go. <laughs> yeah, I believe they uh. lost G Ram here. Mm. Who was playing? G Ram has not previously. been playing. Has G Ram been playing? I don't think he has. Yeah, he he definitely was in the first match, where he was playing as one of the assaults. Uh, trading on the wall, and I believe he was in second match as well. Although I don't remember what mech he was playing. Hmm. Um. Well, in anywho. Um. Okay. Yeah, they got the uh, last eight player here, and they're locked. And they're locked, so they had about one minute left. Um... Let me... Let me transition real quick to the match view. All right, I'm loaded in. I'm gonna go to the Gamma side to meet with the Blob team there and to tell you what mechs they are bringing. All right. Well, uh, did you say you want to do team one side or team two side? Uh, team two side. Okay. Well, I've got team one side. Um, and they are bringing uh, a direwolf, B X C, and stone rhino. So direwolf is stacking AC fives, five AC fives, and three plasma again. Certainly an interesting build. Um, let's go in sigma right away. Uh, locust, phoenix hawk, osiris, and shadow cat going sigma right away. But Team 1 is looking to transition Kappa side. Um, we've seen this from Team 1 from 228R. I, I should have mentioned it in the pregame, where they rotate Kappa side from Team 1. Um, so they're going to give up Theta, actually, um, from Team 1 side, which is not recommended. But they can deny these high ground positions. Somewhat, I mean, by just advancing their mechs to the point that, um, you know, Blob can't take them up. Can't get their mechs there fast enough. Royal Star took a big shot. We'll see. Not, you know, only Slivering, Theta, and Gamma, I don't like from Blob. Yeah, it seems um, it's a running strategy of just leaving the cups. And then they can't Yeah, but... More. 
you can't really deny sliver caps that well. I mean, you can prevent them from capping it. But here comes 228R. They're rolling back to Theta in force. All their mechs are really just stacked up in this gorge. A um, couple of them end up going to Sigma. But we've got a Theta fight here. And I believe Blob's got serious numbers. Four on two. And yeah, I mean, Theta gets ticked back to 228R. Um... Well, not back, but to two two eight R for the first time because you just can't. I mean, you can't deny that um, when it's slivered like that. Kappa um, is you know slivered, but Chronite's gonna try to take it up. But now two two eight R is on the back foot. They've got to find a way to cap, probably Sigma, um, Shine Plasma, and the Die Wolf's trying to get to his spots. Um, I think he might have got stuck. Um, jump jet fuel recharged, finally. Um, I don't know if he has enough jump jets on that direwolf to get to the rock that he needs to get to. So that's not ideal um, for Blob. Yeah, and I can see Reapers already pushing in on Kappa. Huh? There is a chance they're gonna meet up with Blob. Yeah. Here. Reaper's gonna try to push Kappa both sides with the Direwolf. Shine. What is Shine's build? Gossier large. But Lavadashi trying to put some damage out with his AC 10s. And, I mean, Blob just responding to this push by trying to come and defend, but no cap pressure on Theta. Like, I mean,. They have an opportunity here to potentially take it back. Yorshka taking some damage, though. The caps tick further in favor. Mm. What is Arnetheus and Noble Rat doing? Why are they pushing? It seems they're able um, to get a kill on Jiffy and haven't seen all of the Reapers here waiting for them to push in. I mean, they've got a little bit of cover here. It's not really a full push, but pushing pretty far up. Um... Just a lonely night gear out behind the the fight, kind of meandering out in no man's land for for Blob. Um, don't love that if you're them. You're fighting undermanned here, but the fights. I would say Blob's doing a good job here. Shine Plasma finally able to get to the rock he needs to, and this is going to be really not good for uh two two eight R. Uh, as Lava Dash, he's just out in the open. Um, I mean, he can shoot his AC5s up there, but I don't think the range is there. Hopefully, just suppressive fire can come in. Reapers. Gladysaur, though. Yeah. Gladysaur, really good spot. Gladysaur, really good spot to just beam laser ash. Lava Dash getting um, pushed and dice. Yep, yeah, Lava Dash goes down the Dire Wolf. But Ashes, Ashes, he's taking a beating himself, and uh, sorry if the angles haven't been actually great. I'm still getting used to these camera controls. Jiffy pushed back. Nightshare's going to tick Epsilon, but uh, Blob is losing Gamma, so... Oh, there, down goes Yorshka. Um, Blob needs to probably push to try to convert this, and here comes the push. They've got the assaults killed. They can try to push the lights in, but that beam laser shadow cat is just bearing down. Cronite has been lagged. Jiffy about to go down, though. Ooh, they, they don't get him yet. They don't get him yet. Jiffy really tough out in that stone rhino. Jiffy there goes, goes Jiffy, down. and Royal Storm has been lagged, too. So, really... Not good for the 228R, but they have got a big cap lead, an Ice Fair, a Locust, and a Shadow Cat. So if this Ice Fair can get away, um, you know, might be trouble. They've got legs. Oh, they've got a lot more mechs, does Blob, but Temporary Axis and the Shadow Cat. So that's Incubus and a Shadow Cat, both legged. Still got a fast moving Vulcan and a fast moving Flea, but I'm not sure too about too, too many other fast movers. This Nightjar has got to be sticky on Epsilon. He knows that. He's fresh. Um, he's just trying to get some distance. 
Angela but Theta, Theta fight is really going to be critical here as the Ice Ferret's got the flea one on one. Uh, Noble Rat coming in to support, as is Yondu. But able to get the kill on the flea, that's huge from Andy Lart. Absolutely massive. And Epsilon's going back to Blah or 2 Joy Dark. That's critical. No, Slip and Griff. No, you can't let that happen. He gets a kill on oh, Yondu as well. Oh, and down goes Yondu. Andy Lard absolutely clutching up. Can he get the kill on Noble too? Can he just put him to sleep here? Ooh, gets a heat from He's Sven coming Ryan. in. Loses a tight but, side torso, but still winning a lot of time here on Tata. Still just buying time is Andy Lard. And Epsilon, we've got a, a fight on Epsilon as well. Andy Lard goes down. This could be a four cap spot. Fire Ant needs to get sticky and get uh, Epsilon from Slip and Griff. Just hold it. Can he get close to that? The closing of the Nightshare, he has, but is it good enough? Can he just prevent being killed? Kappa's going down, though. All right. Well, it's a three cap. I don't think a four cap wins it. I think it's over for Blob. Fire and still staying alive. Stone Rhino in here trying to help the sleeping grief. Here. They need gamma. Was Noble Rat legged? Noble Rat was legged by Andy Lard. Wow. Oh, wow. Andy Lard with the critical play legs the Vulcan, kills the flea, and um. He killed one more of the, uh, what was it? The Warhammer. Shine Plasma goes down. And that's a win for Reapers. Wow. Reapers loses on kills, but is able to hang in. Gladysaur was able to get a kill on the backside, too. Um, weren't monitoring that fight, but Gladysaur gets a kill on the backside and what have, secured the back cap potentially, too. So, they get the big lead on caps, and they're able to convert. Really tough way for Blob to go down in a match where, you know, you had like an 8-3, um, you know, mech advantage, but you just didn't have legs on your Shadow Cat, didn't have legs on your Incubus, took a lot of percentage on the Warhammer and the Flea, um, and Andy Lard with the play of the game, really, in my opinion. You know, the damage number might not show it, only 216, but that Theta play was not only textbook, above and beyond textbook. Um, just really an incredible play there to get those kills, get that leg. If, if the Vulcan has legs, maybe he you know, gets back to the back cap and maybe something happens. But no, um, just closing it out. Um, Andy Lard just shutting it down. Excellent match tonight. Um, gonna go 3-1 in favor of Reapers. Didn't get the game 5. Um, but that's not necessarily indicative of, of how close this match was. Um, you know, incredibly, incredibly well-fought match from both teams. For Blob, they're going to go home. Um, you know, they're going to have uh, their offseason. Um, better, you know, performance, better finish than they really expected. This was a team that planned on playing 20 games and calling it a tournament. They're going to end up in eighth place. Um, so you'll definitely take that. I'm sure some of those guys had ambitions to go further. I mean, you you play these games to win these games. Um, but as for 228 Reapers, um, struggled in comp queue, but they're really on a heater now as they secure placement in top six. And they've got a chance to play Mantra next week. They might be favored in that game. And if they can beat Mantra, that's a top four finish for a 228 Reapers team that really started the season slow but it's not really coming on as you get into these more structured uh, matches um, as, as, as the tournament moves along. So really excited to see what Reapers can do next week. Um, next week, obviously the headliner, DSC versus um, Vile. I, I believe that is next week. But we also have um, the loser's bracket. We have a couple loser's bracket games. Uh, Mantra versus, uh, as we, we just talked about, um, 228R, and Fjord Visigoths versus 
um, 10th Liren guards. So the current timing is we begin the day. You know, usually you have the undercard. No, we are going to start next week, 2 p.m. Star or 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, I believe that's you could do the math. 1800 UTC. Um, mm-hmm. Dark Sea Corsairs versus Vigilance. Then it will be Mantra versus um, uh, 228R. And then Visigoths versus Le- Tenth Liren Gars to end the day. I think this is going to be the best slate of games that we've had. Um, you know, I think all of those games um, could be competitive, have the, have the, you know, shape up to be competitive matchups. Um, Tenth Liren versus Fjord, they met in Invitationals. Um, Fjord won. Tenth Liren has added some pieces and has really grown through this tournament. I think that'll be a competitive match. Hard to really tell what mantra is. They got the win against Potato Carry Society. Um, but other than that, I mean, we only really saw them in Invitationals. Um, they play a, a 228 Reapers team that's really coming off a hot streak um, after beating, you know, a good KDCM team and a really talented Blob team. And then, of course, Dark Sea Corsairs versus versus Vigilance. I mean, I don't need to tell you why that's such a big game. The, I mean, end up with the Invitationals not being the overall 1-2 seeds, but definitely coming into this tournament, those were the teams that everyone you know was kind of picking to, to go all the way to the end potentially win a, a world championship so um you know chance to go and at least get the first win in what will probably be a multiple matchup series in in that game yep that is true uh certainly a lot of interesting games next week and mm-hmm. i believe it's gonna be all for today and for this week of matches. yeah yeah well uh you know, I'm excited. Um, good way to end the day. Uh, most competitive match of the day. And uh, it was really fun to cast. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what these teams can do next week. But I'm really excited about all of these matchups next week. I think you should have a really competitive slate of games. And you can pick. You can tell me any any three teams win. You know, you can, you can line it up however you want. And I, I think that'll be a believable outcome. So, um Really excited to see to see what happens next week. Well, uh, I'm going to call it, and uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, hope you have a good night. Yep. Thanks for coming, everyone, and bye-bye. Thanks for casting, Mokor.